The first talk, uh, we will have Cecilia Rigi talking about eMind, enabling automatic collection of protein variation impacts in Alzheimer's disease from the literature. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I guess it's just uh, Okay, thank you everyone. Uh, first, thanks the organizers for inviting me for this, giving this talk. Um, <laughs> I'm going to talk about Iman, which is a tool that helps you to uh, gather information, extract information from the literature about variants and uh, impact in the context of disease, in this case Alzheimer. And this is a working collaboration with our, my colleagues at the University of Delaware and, George, and Georgetown University, and funded by NIA supplement to Unipro. So in the context of Uniprot, Uniprot has been awarded a number of supplements to deal uh, with some of Alzheimer's activities. We run some workshops. Uh, we I work with the community to identify targets for curation. And this has been mainly done at SIB. Uh, um, we also have a, a disease uh, portal. Um, and then uh, the last part of last uh, supplement, uh, we were uh, asked to uh, we propose to increase the literature uh, about Alzheimer's disease um, using uh, text mining. And that's where Iman comes uh, into play. So Iman captures impact of variants. So what do we mean by impact? In this case, we kind of divide this into two levels. We could thought, think about impact of um, a variant at the disease level, where whether the impact affects the, the risk to the disease or um, the outcome. And then we have another level, which is um, maybe yeah. the molecular level, which is about the function. So more at the, uh, sorry, OK, I keep here. Um, and the, he, the idea here is that in Uniprot, we are more interested about this second part to capture uh, uh, changes at the molecular level. So when there is a variant a variation at the pro uh, protein coding genes, what happens at the protein level that impacts function, localization, and so on. Here is an example of a sentence uh, that would be useful for Uniprot to capture. Um, and the scope of the work, here we work with abstracts, we work in, the work in Alzheimer's disease context and uh, protein coding variants. So this is uh, depicting the eMind workflow. So basically we have a text processing, regular text processing um, module. Then we have to identify the, the variants and the impact entities. And for that we use Paptator to identify gene disease and variants. And um, we use Dimex to link the variants to the disease. And then we have a BERT model to uh, be able to identify, uh, to predict the impact relation. And this model has been fine-tuned with a number, with a data set that contains relations between an entity and, an, and another entity. And this is um, our hypothesis, is that the way that this is described how these two, the entity and impacted entity, are uh, related is independent of the object of, those, of that relation. So we use a heterogeneous data set to, to fine tune the model, and then we evaluate it in a small data set that is uh, specific for Alzheimer's disease. And we had a good uh, performance, so we decided that this is a good way to go. So we don't finish there, but that is the first thing. Some challenges that we encounter when doing this is that Paptator is not able yet to capture proteoforms in the context of Alzheimer's, for example, Abera 43 or some other proteoforms. Um, also, the non-standard variants, like Icelandic variants, is not, uh, cannot capture that. Or capturing variants in the context of haplotypes or dosage, gene dosage, or animals model synthesis. And for that, we use uh, leverage as forum data, which, so this is very specific to Alzheimer's disease, uh, to bring this up. Ah, and I forgot, and we are now creating, we created a guidelines for um, a corpus, because we're going to evaluate at a larger scale, and for this, oh, sorry, we work with curators, we are using Tintat curation framework, annotation framework, and we uh, have the abstracts pre-annotated with Paptator. And then we have four annotators. These are students, so I'm, going to, I'm stressing this because it's more difficult to train rather than the expert curators. And for that, we are doing two-step annotation process. 
So first of the first activity we ask them to do is to uh, highlight every uh, sentence that is relevant for impact. So for example, those sentences that contains the variant mentioned and the impact of that variant. And also we ask them to uh, classify these uh, sentences, whether these are a background sentence, previous knowledge, investigation, that they are going to do something, or a result. And in general, with this activity, the students did really well. It's more than 80% um, agreement, so they were happy with that activity. And now they're moving towards the next uh, activity, which is entities, uh, checking the entities from Pabtator, and also adding new entities, which are the impacts themselves. So for example, that the variant impact the abundance of some protein, or the variant impact the localization. So they have to identify those things. And in addition, the following relations, the variant to gene protein relation, the variant to disease, and the variant to impact. So it's a big uh, annotation effort. And they're doing this, but they're having difficulty with the impact type. So we're still uh, doing iterations of this. So Iman has a website. We have run an, a, a subset of, um, while doing the training and while um, reviewing some of the information, we have a website with some uh, papers already annotated. Uh, and it's with control vocabulary. So we, for the mutation, we use Uniprot for the proteins. The mutation, we use uh, the HGVS uh, nomenclature. Uh, we use Vario for the effect of the variant on at the molecular level. Uh, we have a lot of uh, the annotations now to risk to disease disease level because at the beginning we were working with all the different, mo uh, different uh, type of um, uh, impacts. And then we have links to the evidence. So you can see where, the, where are the sentences that shows uh, the information. And we also have a um, link in Uniprot from the publications that are not yet annotated by uh, uh, ex uh, are not reviewed, we add these publications with the annotations. So people can have an additional access to the literature. The future directions is that we're going to run evaluation with the new corpus. We're going to expand to other disease eventually. This is very uh, scope because of the supplement. And we want to use like a pipeline from list such as, which is a recommender uh, uh, software to this, uh, to we can, so we can uh, have it in Uniprot pipeline, sorry. And I want to acknowledge Uniprot team because without Uniprot this, we couldn't get the supplement or do this. Thank you. Thanks so much, Cecilia. Uh, I just have one question. Did you, by any chance, use also the large intact data set? Uh, so the number I, of... I didn't hear what data set? So you know the mutational data set that is in, in intact, uh, where you have exactly the, 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 the variant... Muta the and mutation and the P information on PPI, right? Yes. So um, the impact of the variant over an interaction, which is very functional. So it's a corpus of information that yeah. might be useful. Yes, that will be, that will be used because we have we are doing this for Alzheimer, but that will be used for the ge more general one. We are now augmenting the data set to to test the model. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I know. I'm very aware of that data set. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, and so thank you for making it. No, I, I was just wondering whether having such a data set could be useful to yes, train the. It is definitely for, at okay. least for the interaction part, impact on the interactions. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. So yeah, very nice talk. I'm sure you're also aware of the links between the REST SNPs and, and the GWAS database. Uh, yes. So uh, <laughs> it's interesting whether uh, some of these will come up in other diseases, for example, yeah? Yeah. Uh, has anyone had a systematic look of these Alzheimer's variants against on the GWAS data set? Uh, no, we haven't done that because for this one, we have a year to complete for the supplement, so it's very scope. But as I mentioned, it's our willingness and I, I hope to expand, yes. Thank you. Thank you.